We're going to look at various patches and I'm going to call them visible patches. Um, I'll do a few videos of different alternatives. Um, I happen not to like in patches that are invisible because I think it's very difficult to make them look completely invisible. So you might as well make it part of the artistic nature of your mend. Um, now, children's genes are a good one to look at, partly because they're small for me to demonstrate on, but also because um, a children's genes tend to go at the knees and it's painful for them if they do rip and then they trip again. Um, and the rest of the genes might be fine. So what we're looking at here is a weakness around the uh, knee area only. So it's both up the way and down the way. Um, so what I'm going to do is take two different types of patches. One is my leftover jeans patch, which has a bit of elasticity in it and is really quite tough. Um, I'm cutting it in a rectangle and I'll explain why and uh, going to um, fray that a bit as well. And the other is a bit of old shirting. Now this is nice brushed cotton, but it'll be much weaker. So this is an alternative. You can do that on any clothes you want. Uh, I just thought I'd uh, do it as a as a teaching method really. And you, the child could have two different patches. What does it matter? So what I've done with this piece of cloth here is that I have um, cut it as best as I can along the grains of the cloth. Now cloth is woven with a warp, that's the vertical lines, and a weft, that's the horizontal lines. And um, you can fray cloth, particularly if it's a nice sturdy cloth like this, it won't, un it won't carry on fraying. So if you take a needle to the edge, you can catch um, a piece of thread. Now I'm taking the weft out, and just for you to see, the weft has the elastane in it. So look how curly it is. Look, that's where the elastic is. And so that means that the front of your uh, denim is entirely cotton and the back has got the synthetic in it. And the front is dyed and the back is a different sort of colour. So when you fray it, you end up with light blue edges and dark blue edges. So I'll start with this piece of cloth on this knee. I'm using thread that I happen to have in the house. You won't always have this kind of thread available, um, but over the years, I think I've bought embroidery kits and I've hardly ever finished them, so I kept the threads. Rather than use white, I'm using a pale gray, and we're gonna look at a stitch that's a little bit Japanesey looking. Because the trousers are small, it's difficult to get my hand into them to secure from the back. So I'm going to pin and then secure my thread from the front only. So I'll put in a pin to keep it in place. And then secure my thread by running it from another place in the jean up to the edge of my diagonal. I'm going to secure the thread with a couple of overstitches and then I'm ready to stitch. Let's move this to the center of the screen now. So with my hands inside, actually I'm gonna put in a couple more pins. Uh, keep it in place. There we are. I've covered the weak, weakest area and now I'm gonna go around the outside just with a running stitch. Now I use my right hand, because I'm right-handed, to put the needle in and out, and I use my left hand to guide the stitching. Now it's quite tough sometimes to pull these threads through. I'm using a, an, a fairly sharp needle. It's quite sharp, and it's not necessarily an embroidery needle, I think. This is one of the larger needles from an ordinary sewing needle pack, household needle pack. Then I get to do another row. Now this stitch is, is similar to the Japanese technique called boro, which just means that it's, you can see even running stitches and in a way you create patterns with them and the cloth lays over itself. So now I'm going to go around the outside and if I, when I need to stop, I'll show you how I um, reconnect new thread. 
Now I've been turning the work as I as I need to go round and removing pins. I can take this last pin out actually. Um, so I've got to a place where the thread is getting a bit short. It's getting a bit awkward. I've also done two full uh, rectangular things. I've gone roughly in parallel, starting from the outside. Um, and now my thread's getting a bit short. I'm going to secure it. So I'll go over a couple of times. There. And to get rid of the end, I'm simply going to poke it into the back and I can trim it off later. Um, so now I'll thread a new needle. I forgot to say, of course, that these embroidery threads come with six strands. And I prefer to work with three of those six strands. So you open up the, uh, the number of strands and then just gently split it. Um, I'm going to uh, thread another needle and come back on screen. So I've put another length of thread in. I'm going to stick my needle into the middle of the patch, but come out roughly where I want to sew my next set of parallel lines. There we are. And then go over twice, one stitch, and that secures it. Um, and then I can start going round again. So I'm going to carry on going in parallel lines, getting smaller and smaller. Well, the, the rectangles will get smaller and smaller until I think it looks right. So I'll finish this off and then have a look at the final item. So in fact, I've decided I only want three rows. Sometimes I make them closer together, and uh, but this is quite a chunky look and that's absolutely fine. It's what really suits the, the little boy who owns these trousers and that's fine. So I'm going to finish up doing my last row of running stitch up to the corner. There we are. And then secure my stitch and take it to the back. And because there's lots of thread left, I'll, I'll just trim it at the back and start on the next patch. It looks quite good really, and it didn't take very long. Now this next patch is going to be different. This is probably, it should be cotton, but I think it's probably a viscose brushed shirt. It's much, much softer and it will fray. I just know it will, but I'm not gonna pre-fray it because it's just gonna fray anyway. So I don't have to do any organization there. I have to pin it in and it has to be pinned in quite well because this fabric will move. So I'm not going to do that, uh, those, fall around the edges, those sort of tracing tram lines, because the fabric is going to move across like that. What I'm going to do is go up and down the way. So um, I'm going to bring my thread in from the back and we're still going to use that same running stitch. I'm only going through one layer of cloth. Um, there. And actually I can feel I'm only going through one layer of cloth so I haven't put my hand in the trouser. Um, but it probably would be better if I did, but for filming right now, I'll carry on as I am. Oh, I get stuck. There, okay. So I'm going to go up one the way, turn around and come back down the other way and do this over the whole patch. Now, you in the old days was a great thing about sewing on patches round the edge and then the rest would just be patched, but this cloth is quite weak, and I think that part of the importance of patching is that you reinforce the whole cloth, and so it starts to act as one. So I like patching. That um, means that two cloths are melded into one, and with this stitching method, you can do that, and it's fairly fast. So turning around again, um, and this time I'm gonna put my hand inside if I can. There we are, nice. Keep it flat as I can. So because it's fairly thin cloth, I'm gonna go in closer lines on this. Um, the stitches don't have to be in parallel at all, but it's, it's good if you can keep them more or less the same length. When I cut out the, uh, the rectangle of cloth, I did try and cut it out so that the, the uh, woven check 
was equal on both sides because I think that's quite nice. That's a better look. So here I am just carrying on with the running stitch up and down and I'm going to catch up with you again when I've done a lot more of it. So I'm just coming to the end. I've gone up, down, up, down. And each time I've crossed over the line, I made sure there's this nice little straight stitch. So you get a running stitch around the edge and that helps protect the fraying. It, it, once it starts to fray, it'll only be able to fray up to that stitch line. So, And I purposefully have put a lot of, um, of lines in, a lot of stitching lines in, because the cloth is quite weak. So it's all now completely reinforced. I think that looks quite good. So I, I've kept about a half a centimetre, I suppose, from the edge. Um, and uh, so this is my final stitch. One, two, and I should go just an extra three securing stitch. And so that's the second patch. Now I'm not satisfied, I'm afraid, with having two patches. I want a bit of extra decoration, but that's because I quite like doing this sort of thing. So here we've got two different types of patches on the same jeans. It's more for demo than anything else, but it doesn't look too bad. And I've decided that I also want to put in a bit of cross stitch up here in a sort of line. Um, perhaps this will be a bit too much with both knees being different, but I'm gonna demonstrate it here and you can decide if you ever wanted to do it. So I'm going to again, once again, secure stitch in from underneath. So take the thread underneath and then secure stitch. Now you may have done cross stitch a long time ago, you may never have done it. Um, so let's just start from the beginning, get my hand behind and take the pocket out of the way because it'd be annoying if I sewed the pocket shut, wouldn't it? My preferred way of doing cross stitch is go up to the right, across to the left and down to the right and then back up to the left hand corner again. Now. Everyone has their own ways of doing it, and um, in this particular instance, this is better because it keeps the length of cloth at the back nice and short, so little toes don't get caught in it. Now, because this is not an embroidery class and it's supposed to look a bit rough and ready, um, I'm going to make it go wider and narrower, and I'm going to do a strip and then show you again when I'm finishing off. So here I've gone up the way. I ran out of thread there, so I had to secure it again. The nice thing about cross stitches is you can make, even mid cross stitch, you can exchange, extend or change the length of it. Um, I'll do a couple of small ones at the top again, and then finish off um, and show you the whole thing. Um, I quite like this pale gray on the denim. It's not too ostentatious, it sort of blends a bit. Um, if it's too dark a colour, then obviously you don't see it. And if it's a bright colour, it can look very, um, oh, how shall I describe that? It can be a bit sort of pretty and Eastern European decorative, which may not suit jeans material. Could suit another garment, but not jeans. So here we have, uh, a restored pair of children's trousers. I'll take a still in a bit.